Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Pierce and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about categories of disease or how to diagnose yourself. We don't want to diagnose ourselves generally. We do want to critique our diagnoses that we get from other people and we want to think about them very critically. We want to realize that there is an old phrase that says, he who treats himself has a fool for a patient. And I think that's true. I've made that mistake. And I think that most people, even doctors, especially doctors, need to learn that lesson very acutely. Don't treat yourself or diagnose yourself without help from others. And uh, certainly you should be involved in the process, but you shouldn't be the driver without knowing that there might be someone who could give you an alternative perspective or help you see your blind spots. We all have blind spots and cognitive biases. Even the best experts have blind spots. Sometimes they're the biggest blind spots. And in any case, we want to talk about how to figure out what's wrong with you. Not necessarily diagnose yourself, but how to figure out what's wrong with you if there's something wrong. Or how to figure out what's out of order if there's nothing that's diseased. When a patient goes to a doctor, the doctor either tells them they have a diagnosis or they don't. So if you have a diagnosis, then the doctor can work on you with that diagnosis and you can argue with them and you can see if it's the right diagnosis or you can see if it's different or if it's right or wrong or if it's false or if there's another category of diagnosis. However, when the doctor tells you you don't have a diagnosis and there's nothing technically medically wrong with you, then you fall kind of in the category of functional medicine. Even though functional medicine can be used for pathology and disease, it's also used in people that don't have a diagnosable illness. There's something wrong with their health and wellness. They don't feel good, they've got complaints, but they don't fall into the category of a diagnostic, diagnostic code. So if you don't fall into the category of a diagnostic code, uh, or, or if you do, you still wanna to try to figure out what category is my, my problem. The biggest deficit or problem that I see in doctors and even patients diagnosing themselves and each other is, is they, hear symptoms, they listen to the story of what's wrong, and they leap to a set of possible diagnoses. Like they might think of five different things, like this is heart disease, this is a rib out of place, or this is a lung infection because the person has chest pain. So in disciplining yourself, in thinking in certain ways, you have to be very disciplined like an airline pilot would be, or a surgeon, or, or someone who has to have a very disciplined mind. And you don't want to let your mind run away from, from yourself. You want to kind of reel it in and corral it and, and make it think about certain things in order before it goes on to other things and makes assumptions. So I tell my students, my interns, not to jump right away to a diagnosis, to jump to a category. So the general categories are really important. And this is in all the diagnosis textbooks, but it seems like a lot of people forget them. Doctors do, interns do, uh, patients do, nurses do. It's a big problem. So let's just think about the categories of what could be wrong with you, whether it's functional, meaning not a true diagnosis, just something's departed from nature and departed from, not nature, but departed from wellness and uh, isn't quite a disease or something is a disease. Those categories would be things that are very obvious to you. So if you just think about it, what are the kinds of things that could go wrong with me? They could be infectious. I could get an infection. Something could come in and invade me and try to multiply. I could have a degenerative disease where I get older and something wears out, which there's argument that that might be metabolic or other things too, but just for now, let's put that as degenerative. Another one might be a deficiency where I've missed something that I'm supposed to have. I'm supposed to have a vital nutrient and I don't have it. Another one is toxicity or poisoning, and that one has subcategories. I could be poisoned by heavy metals that are occurring in the environment, or I could be poisoned by heavy metals that are produced by man-made manufacturing or it could be produced by man-made toxins that are chemicals, molecules that are made in industry. I could be uh, poisoned by my own elevating levels of toxins that are in my body naturally that I'm just not getting rid of like other people are. So we wanna ask ourselves, is it toxicity or what used to be called poisoning? We could also look at genetic. Do I have a, a disease that's, that's hereditary? Did I inherit some gene that turned on and gave me a clear disease? There are a number of diseases that are inherited and they turn on and turn off to varying degrees. They turn up and turn down their intensity based on epigenetics or, or how a person's stress is and how their toxins are and how their, their nutrients are and you know, what they do to balance their chemistry as much as possible. Now, not to say that they can cure a disease, but they might be able to make it more, um, more or less intense, turn it up and down by 
controlling its expression of genes. So another category is trauma. The category of illness you might have gotten could be from trauma. Physical forces hit your body and your body reacted like a broken bone. You know, broken bone is not an infection, except when it is. Now, if you have an infected bone and it bursts because it's been infected from the inside, that's a different story than if a baseball hits you in the leg and breaks your leg. So realize that there's a, a bunch of categories. And then there's another category that's basically cancer. It's, it's some kind of cancer that affects you. Some cancer may be infectious. There's a lot of contention about that. But whether or not cancer is infectious, the idea of a cancer is another category of disease. So in infection, cancer, degeneration, trauma, genetic, some deficiency or some toxicity is the general categories that we try to think of. So we want our doctors to think of, okay, what category of illness is this in? Is this person's complaint, as I said before, they got a chest pain. That could be a million things. Don't think immediately to a diagnosis. Think of, is it an infection in the chest somewhere? Not picking an organ yet, but kind of staying broad, forcing your brain to really stay broad. Is it some kind of infectious process somewhere in the trunk? Is it a trauma in the trunk? Is it a degenerative disease in, in, in the trunk somewhere? Maybe in a rib or some kind of joint or in the spine? Is it a genetic disease that turned on? And if it was a genetic disease, did it turn on slowly or fast? Sometimes these genes hit you like a ton of bricks, and sometimes they start slowly. And, and uh, like some of the autoimmune diseases, they take a long time for onset, and they're very slow. So discipline your mind to not jump right to a diagnosis or even an organ. Think of a, of a type of, of illness, a category of illness, and ask questions like, for example, did you have any recent impacts? Did you have any past impacts, old or new, where you could have impacted your thorax somehow? Your body could have been hit from behind or in front. You could have had a sharp blow or you could have had a broad blow. You could have fallen on the ice. It could be a very broad type of impact or a very focused type of impact, like being hit by a broomstick, you know, that's completely different than being falling on your back on the ice. That's a very broad impact versus a narrow focal impact. So questioning will very much help people. And I think that's the one that's most frequently inadequate in the workup of a, of a new patient. The next category then after that would really be looking at organ systems. If, if I hurt in my chest cavity somewhere, is it my lungs that hurt? that is the source of the pain, it's generating the pain, or is it my ribs? I have ribs in the front, I have joints in the front, I have joints in the back, I have ribs that go all the way around. Is it a bone of the rib that's somewhere going around my, my trunk, or is it in where the attaches in the front or in the back? Is it generally a bony joint type of problem, or is it generally a lung organ type of problem? Is it more in the, the tissues of my lungs or in the, the actual bronchial tubes of the lung? If, if it was something else, it could possibly be referral pain coming from my abdomen. Maybe my, my gallbladder or liver hurts and it's sending pain up to my shoulder. And I have pain in my thorax in my right shoulder blade, but it's coming down here from my gallbladder. So you have to ask yourself, is the pain right where, where they say it is? Or is the pain being referred from some other area? And the body can refer pain from a far distance away. I had once a pain in my, my, my wrist that was caused by a trigger point in my infraspinatus muscle, which is right up here in the back of the shoulder. And so the cause of the pain was back here, but the, but the actual pain that I felt was here. And this is on all trigger point charts. Everybody shares the same neurology and anatomy. So the concept of having a, an area of the body throw pain, like when you throw your voice from one area to another that's you know three feet away, is something we have to consider. So what is the body system that's doing it? Is it my skeletal system and joints that's causing the problem and generating the pain? Is it my organs of my lungs? Is it my heart? Is it my pericardium? You know, we used to see this all the time between chiropractors and medical doctors. A patient would go in with central chest pain and the doctor, medical doctor would diagnose them 99% with some pericarditis. And the chiropractor would diagnose them 99% with a rib subluxation. So who's right and who's wrong? Well, you, you know, when we would follow up with them, we'd find that the ones that went for a long time with the treatment and didn't get better usually had the other diagnosis. So if the medical doctor thought they had pericarditis and treated them for pericarditis with you know, antibiotics or other types of therapies or, or any number of things to try to reduce the pericarditis, which they could use vitamins, they could use minerals, there's lots of causes for pericarditis, but none of them involve fixing a rib. And so if the patient never got better, perhaps the chiropractor would step in and say, let's treat this as though it were a rib. And so that gets to our next point, which is, 
If you have a diagnosis that doesn't seem to be right because the treatment isn't working, you can do a therapeutic trial of another kind of treatment to see if that's the diagnosis. So if the original diagnosis of my chest pain was, for example, pericarditis, the sac around the, around the heart, the pericardium, is infected or inflamed, and I am not satisfied with the treatment, then I might treat it as though it were a rib subluxation, a rib head subluxation in my sternum. I would go to the chiropractor, I would have that, that rib adjusted from the back, from the front, from the side, from wherever, and I would see if that might help me get over my problem. And if it does, then I can say, well, gosh, that diagnosis was actually a rib subluxation, for example. And it goes the opposite way too. When we chiropractors treat somebody for a rib and it, and it doesn't get better with chronic treatment, then we have to say, well, gosh, maybe it's pericarditis. But we ought to be able to have at least some hint by asking the patient, is this a deep or superficial, deeper surface sensation? Does it feel like it's right here or does it feel like it's deep inside you? Does it get worse when you take a deep breath and does it feel like it's internal? Does it feel like it's external and stabby like it's in the back or the front when you take a deep breath? When you bend into it or bend away from it, does it get worse or, or does it get better? So these are all little types of things that can help us figure out what's wrong with us because we all make misdiagnoses and diagnosis is notoriously inaccurate. There are many studies that show even Mayo Clinic's rates of, of accuracy when done with autopsy have been, you know, on the order of 26 to 32 percent. This is not to say that, that they're bad. It's only to say that we all in, in medicine, a holistic and, and conventional medicine, we have a challenge of, of diagnosis is hard. So we want to correlate many, as many signs and symptoms as we can. We want to correlate as much history as we can and as much laboratory and imaging as we can to be able to triangulate what is the actual problem. If a person comes to a, a specialist and says, I've been to many doctors and I need help, there's only really two possibilities. Either your diagnosis is right and your treatment is wrong, or your diagnosis is wrong. Well, there is another possibility. You could have an intractable disease that's incurable and it's just not getting better and there's no treatment for it. But that's extremely rare that you can't make some dent in even the most terrible illnesses. So I just want you to realize that there's a lot of hope for even the most terrible of, of illnesses and diagnoses. There are many palliative things that can be done. Palliative means soothing or something that can make you feel better even as you're dying of a terrible illness. So please understand that most people can be helped in some way from the alleviation of the suffering, if not the actual fundamental process. But what we like to do is look at root causes and try to figure out what is the real problem. Is the real problem a biochemical pathway or is it a deficiency of some drug? Most of the time it's not just a deficiency of some drug. <laughs>